Hey everybody, welcome to this installment of the CEO for Life Daily, where we like to bring you on a frequent basis concepts, ideas, tips, tricks, strategies on how to be your CEO for life, how you can take charge of your professional career, whether it be in the current career that you're in and wanting to accelerate that. Maybe you want to change careers. Maybe you want to start a business or maybe you want to scale a current business that you have. It all comes back to you taking the ideas, tactics, strategies that CEOs use to run major businesses you can use in order to run who you are in your professional development. And I'm excited about today because we're going to be talking about some tips for successful career development. So hey, it's Robert Barber from the CEO for Life Academy. I love this particular topic because it is something that um, a majority of my clients have come to me over the last two years And it has to do specifically with the fact that they are in a position where they've taken a step back looking at their current career and really wanting to accelerate it and develop the current career that they're in. They're seeing their organization take some changes. Maybe their boss is moving on or maybe they're moving up or or maybe there's some opportunities coming up inside the organization that they want to try. And so they're really trying to get an idea of how do I construct a plan in order to go after these opportunities. And so we've been doing a lot about that. So I'm excited to bring you some of these tips, tricks, and strategies around um, career development today. So let's jump right in and uh, here we go. First and foremost, that it's something that, so I spent Um, So my degree is as an an engineer, and I worked for a major Fortune 150 company when I came out of school as an engineer, but then I transitioned because I found my heart in doing human resources and labor relations, right? So I was in a technical environment, but what I really loved was helping solve people problems. And with that, I would coach a lot of executives. I mean, we're talking, you know, plant managers, we're talking senior vice presidents, we're talking directors, we're talking um, trading organizations, we're talking um, dealing with people that are responsible for billions of dollars of assets and thousands of people. And I was coaching them. And one of the things that we would spend a lot of time talking about was uh, their problem with their boss or their problem with um, their leadership. And the first thing I had to put out there for people when I was coaching and, and working with them was your manager and your boss or supervisor is not responsible for your career. You are in control and in the driver's seat of your career. Now, don't hear me by saying that they don't have an impact on it. Of course they do. Your manager, your boss, your supervisor is not responsible for your career, but they are the one that give you the opportunity and the access in order to accelerate in the path that you have. So that's a very big distinction. Is it? Do not fault your um you not pursuing and accelerating in your career the way you want on your boss. It's not their, it's not their, they're not the pilot of your career. You are, but they're the one that help guide you, give you access and opportunities. It's up to you to take the time to come up with your own career development plan. Now, that's not a performance, uh, it's not a performance plan. It's not the annual PIP process. It's not the annual performance plan process, whatever you call it inside your organization. That is specifically driven towards organizational goals. Yes, there's a development piece to it, but it is not your career development plan. And I want to suggest to you today that it is your responsibility to take the time to decide on your career development trajectory, put a plan in place for it, and then execute on it with the input and help of your leadership, your supervisor, your boss. Take control over it, and that's the first thing I want to do. If you hear nothing else about what we talk about today in terms of our tips, tricks, and strategies around this, just do this. Take the time to develop your own career development plan. Yes, allow it to match what's going on inside your organization, but take control of your development plan. Put your own time into it. Become your CEO for your life and your career development. Now, how does that career development plan come together? Well, it first starts with finding a clarity of your purpose, then setting a direction, and then creating a consistent execution of the plan that you have in place. Now, we teach about that in our six-week course, and if you'd like to know more about it, there'll be information above or below on how you can check out our six-week course on how to uh, set the goals that you need to in order your career career development plan. But uh, today, we're going to talk about five tactics and strategies where you can start today on that 
uh, on that journey of executing and getting towards the career development that you want. So let's jump right in with uh, number one. The first one. The first one is set small goals often. Set small goals often. Oftentimes, when we look at our career, we have this idea that we need to go all the way to the end, right? Now, we need to be looking at the end of the year. Now, what happens oftentimes is that becomes too big and we become overwhelmed. And so what we want to do is break down our big goal, our big vision into smaller achievable items. Now, I don't want you to be making a plan to be your, in your, your boss's position by year end, but getting to um, small achievable things. Maybe you need a tier one cert or maybe you need to volunteer for two new opportunities this year. I want you to create stackable goals. And I like to create goals that are called level one, level two, and level three. You got to first achieve the level one goals in order to get level two and level three. So when you're designing your plan for career development, I want you to be thinking about, okay, if I want to get into a role of management or supervisor, or maybe I want to get into the next level of whatever that career path is that I have in the organization, I want you to then break down the different achievements that you need to have. What are the talents? What are the skills? What's the development you need? And then I want you to assign them in a way where they're stackable, where you're progressing and knowing you're moving. I'm a big person on measurement. I love measuring because what gets measured gets done. And I want you to assign your goals in terms of level one, level two, and level three so they're stackable. Now, it's called a career path, not a career jump, right? That's why these stackable goals are important. Think of your career path and stackable steps of where you're going to move so you can measure and see that you're getting to where you want. But it also demonstrates to the people around you that see you that you're progressing and moving and that you're not just in a sporadic, um, spontaneous movement of your development. A great way to, um, to achieve level one, level two, and level three is just start volunteering for assignments. When you're sitting in meetings or you're in an environment where you're hearing what's going on in the organization, I want you to become a volunteer for assignments. That is the best way to pursue and jump, make jumps with inside your career path. A uh, perfect example is I was with inside a, like I said, a very big organization and I was trying to pursue a career path that I wanted and I could have stayed in the current career path that I was, but there were opportunities coming up to do some really different things with inside the organization and I volunteered for those assignments and that accelerated me upon my career path because what it did is it stretched me, it allowed the organization to see what I was capable of, but if I would have just sat back and waited for my boss or my supervisor to come and tap me on the shoulder, I would have been waiting. And that, that's okay, but it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't a part of the plan that I had developed for myself. So I want you to become a volunteer for assignments inside your organization. Volunteer for those small goals, those small stackable level ones that you're putting in place in your plan. But do not get overwhelmed by where the, the vision is or where you want to go. Break it down into small achievable goals. That's the first thing I want to talk about. Second tactic. Stretch yourself. If you are going to work every day in your career or your profession and you're not being uncomfortable, then that doesn't mean you're, that means you're not growing. Discomfort means growth. Seek the uncomfortable with inside your organization. Maybe there's an opportunity to run some sort of a meeting that, um, that you know, you're just not comfortable with and maybe it requires you to get up and present particular reports or, um, or, or run the meeting just in general. Whatever it is, like public speaking is a good one. That's a lot of what uh, clients come to me and they're just, they're, they're just even afraid to tell their, their, their boss what their vision is and where they want to go. You got to find the opportunity in order to be uncomfortable. And then you, once you find the opportunity to be uncomfortable, find some way to make it comfortable. Uh, a lot of times what I, um, I coach my clients that are having trouble with public speaking is I tell them to use a whiteboard. A whiteboard is kind of like an anchor. It gives you the ability to kind of have something to anchor onto. It's a lot of reasons why people stand behind a podium and hold on to it because it makes them feel safe. A whiteboard is a great way to get through public speaking if you're uncomfortable with it because it allows you to take time to write down your idea. It gives you a physical anchor in order to go back to and reference. It allows you to see your train of thought as you're going in and breaking it down. 
Um, it's just a really good way to go about it. So no matter what it is that you're uncomfortable, you can find a way to make it a little less uncomfortable so you can go after it. Now I want you to find something um, that you've not done, something that you're afraid of doing. Now, um, you know, I want you to find that place that's uncomfortable in your, uh, with inside your organization, I want you to volunteer for that and put it into your plan. We just talked about having your own career development plan. Put it in your plan that I'm gonna volunteer for three things this year and these are the things that I'm most afraid of doing and, I'm, I'm, and when they, those opportunities come up, I'm gonna make sure I volunteer for them. So stretch yourself, that's number two. Number three, I want you to learn, celebrate, and grow. This is something that we don't do enough is that along our journey, in our career development is we don't take time to celebrate the small wins that we have. We don't celebrate enough. We tend to focus on our trip ups and, um, and not looking at our small wins. Now failing that you've heard, everyone's heard this is fail forward, you know, learn from your failing. That's all good. I think that's exactly what I'm talking about here is, is, is you should be celebrating your wins and your fails. But I wanna give you this particular tip and trick, and this goes back to making sure you have that career development plan. Your own personal career development plan, I want you to go ahead and create your own inventory of your fails before your boss does and identify the wins and how it made you grow. This is, this is a super good strategy because when you do, you're gonna to come to the year end and you're gonna have a performance evaluation. Most of us don't have the opportunity of a monthly plan a quarterly plan where we can sit down, but most of us are running into an annual performance plan. And by then, the fails may be so far away that you don't really remember the growth and those kind of things. Take an inventory of your fails throughout the year in your career development plan. So when it comes time to talk about them, it's not so much a focus on the fail, it's more of what did you learn? What did you grow? Again, it goes back to taking control of your career development yourself. It's not your boss's responsibility to get you to where you want to go. It's their responsibility to give you access and opportunity. It's your job to grow in it and then allow people to see why you're doing what you're doing and, and, uh, and how good you are at it. So that inventory thing is a great one. I love that one. I worked with that, especially with inside the organizations that I'm working with. They're very high performance organizations. They're very metric driven. And a lot of times, uh, organizations get just so focused on the metrics of the fail. We didn't hit this number. We didn't do this. We didn't achieve this. Yes, we didn't because of X, Y, and Z, but look at the growth that came out of it. Here's the positive. Have that prepared and have that ready, not only for yourself, but also for the organization in order to convince them why you are who you are and why they should uh, continue to promote you on your career path. Number four, find knowledge. Knowledge doesn't find you. You must find it unless it smacks you in the face, and that's, but that's not the preferable way to learn, right? Find your own knowledge. Again, it's not your boss's responsibility to find the training necessary, the certifications necessary, the development uh, tools that you need in order to go where you wanna go. You have that responsibility. I just had a conversation with um, my oldest daughter. She's 22 this week, and, and I've just been on her about developing her own personal budget, her own CEO budget for her household, for her. And, um, and we just been button heads against it. And again, it's not my responsibility. She's a big girl. She can do this herself. It's not my responsibility to do the budget for her. And so that's been a lot of our friction. And she's like, well, I just don't know how to do it. That's the conversation that we just had. And I was like, Let's go ahead and jump on FaceTime together. I brought up the share screen and I brought up the YouTube videos, hundreds of them on how to develop your own personal home budget. And I said to her, honey, you have access to the greatest knowledge base ever. It is on you to take the time to learn about how to do your budget. Go ahead and watch these. And the first thing she said to me is, great, I don't wanna even hear from you right now. I just wanna watch the videos. I'll go watch the videos and then we'll get back together and talk about the budget. You have access to more information. You're just not willing to go find it. So go find it. You have no excuse for not taking new classes online once a week, a podcast, having a mentor, something. Now, I would love for you to even maybe write a LinkedIn article a week. This is something that I think is so underrated. You have the ability to show yourself as an expert in your field by just writing a LinkedIn article a week. And what that does for you, it requires you to then go do some research, go learn, take some information in, filter it through who you are and through your experiences, and then you put that into the world and as an article, and now all of a sudden you are an expert. Think about it, if you wrote one article a week for the next 
90 days, you'd have, what, 12 articles that show that you're an expert in your field. Start now. That's, that's, the, that's the takeaway for this one. All right, number five. Boy, we're rolling right through these. Number five, networking. It really does matter who you know, and more importantly, who knows you. You know, that's one of the reasons why we go through the process with inside the CEO for Life Academy, and I'm such a big proponent of it, is everyone should have a vision statement. You need to have a vision statement, and why? Because this comes to the, the crux of networking. When you're going out into the world and you want to create connection or create network or uh, maybe uh, bring an ally into your, into your sphere, you need to be able to clearly communicate where you're going. You can't ask someone to come along with you in your journey if you can't clearly communicate where you're going. Having a vision statement and going through the process of developing that is super critical in order to grow your network. I tell you, I'm not going to hitch my, my, uh, my wagon, my resources, my time to someone who can't clearly tell me where they're going. Why would I do that? You know, I'm not, I don't have time to sit down with someone. Every time I take in a new client, that's where we start. Where's your vision? Where are we going? What is the direction? I can come alongside you if I know where we're going. And creating a network and having people that you need in your network starts with having a vision. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to plan some time. Now, whether you do it through the CEO for Life Academy and, and you know, use our six-week online course or whether you, you know, go to YouTube and watch all the videos that are out there or maybe you find a template or a worksheet, whatever it is, um, or sit down with your spouse or someone, I want you to go back and I want you to really spend some time developing your vision statement because there, what you can then is you can then plan the time to meet new people to level up in your network. And what I mean by that is I want you to take the time to identify two people in the next week that have already pursued the career that you want to go after and I want you to spend some time talking to them and bring them into your network. Now, it would be preferable for them to be outside of your organization. And how you can do that is, because that's the number one question I'm going to get right now is, well, Rob, how do I find someone outside of my organization? I may live in, um, you know, I may live in Chattanooga and, you know, I'm the, we're the only organization here and I don't know anybody else in this town that um, has the particular role that I want to go after. Guess what? Go to LinkedIn, put in the job title of what you want to go after, find people with inside your network that are either one or two away from you, make connection with them, but you're going to need to have your vision statement in order to have a conversation with them. So I want you to plan at least two people in the next week that you're going to connect with that are already in the position of where you want to go in terms of your career development, and I want you to begin to connect with them, have a conversation, even ask them to be your mentor. What do you think would happen if you asked them to be your mentor? I think there could be some really good life change and some really acceleration in your career development. The gravity of people is super important. If you don't do anything that we just talked about other than sitting down, creating a vision statement and leveling up your network, you're going to see movement in your career. Now, I'm going to just push a little bit here. If this sounds like a lot to you, you really don't know how to put this together, you really don't know where to start, I just recommend take our six-week course. CEO for Life, six weeks to your goals. Um, it's all about high performance habits in terms of um, developing clarity, courage, influence, energy, and productivity. And then it's also applying this process of creating a vision statement for your life, but then putting goals in place that you can achieve and execute on in order to get where you want. Just six weeks. I hope you uh, enjoyed today's uh, CEO for Life Daily tips, tricks, and strategies around career development. It's a uh, it's it's a very important part of what we do in terms of coaching and teaching. Here is helping people accelerate in their career. If you have any questions about our six-week um, online course, you can uh, look above or below, and you can get some information and get some links there. But I highly recommend you jump into that if this is uh, if this is perked your interest into taking a further step to having a executable plan that you know that in six weeks you're going to have a plan that you're executing on and moving into that career that you want. That's it for our CEO for Life Daily. I hope you got a lot out of this. I really enjoy doing these. We really love bringing you great content. 
tips, tricks, and strategies. Love to hear your comments. Put them down below and uh, we'd like to follow up, but we'll see you on the next episode of the CEO for Life Daily. Go out and get them. Remember, it's not your boss's responsibility, your supervisor's responsibility, the leader of your organization's responsibility to develop your career. They give you opportunity and access. It's your job to have a plan. It's your job in order to put it in place and execute consistently. You can do it. Go out, make it happen. We'll see you on the next episode.